Right. But I do want to talk specifically about breast implant illness, which is kind of separate. It's kind of, it's sort of like linked in with connective tissue disorders, but really kind of its own entity. And so it's actually a term that was coined pretty recently to describe symptoms that women had that had breast implants. And so uh, I think Trovis, if I'm correct, the next slide is the same. Yeah, okay, here we go. So I'm not gonna say all of them, but the big <coughs> ones are fatigue, joint pain, headaches, brain fog, like these very, as you said, self-reported symptoms that are not things that you can really measure with like a lab study yeah. or an x-ray or whatever. And the other thing I always mention when I'm talking about breast implant illness is these are symptoms that do absolutely come on as you age, right? Yeah. What happens as you age? You're more likely to have joint pain. You're and more likely tired. to have muscle pain. Right. You're more likely. I mean, I, I know that myself. Like I get, I mean, I'm, you know, late forties now, I'm not the spring chicken I was, and I don't have the energy that I had when I was younger. I mean, obviously I don't have breast implants, right? So it's not even a question, but some Maybe of these you should things, get them. Think so. figure, yeah. So, what do you think? Like a C cup? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna pass on breast implants. Thank you, though, Sarah, for that recommendation. Do I do what I can. <laughs> do I mean, would I do it myself? I, don't know. I hope not. <laughs> you have to film it live, though. That's right. All right. So anyway, um, also these uh, symptoms are associated with either saline or silicone implants. So that they're not necessarily doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? People will say that it's people with saying the implants say that they have breast implant illness. And, and these gain massive attention due to social media. I mean, this is truly a condition that was born out of social media because where this kind of got its root was Facebook groups. There's two massive Facebook, Facebook groups, and I'm not a member of them. I have no interest in being on yeah. them just because, I mean, there's just no point, but yeah. that they're, they're, they're almost like, um, like uh, recovery groups for people who feel like they're having issues with the implants. And that's how this thing really gained a lot of traction yeah. because these Facebook groups have power. Yeah. They like, just like feed off of each other. Yeah. Like and a, I don't want to say that like in, you know, like in a negative way, because there's a lot of Facebook groups that are, good. You know, that are very scientific and, you know, I'm not sure that, that these are as scientific. Like I think that they will bring in studies and I haven't even been on there. So like, I can't say for sure. But the whole point is that, you know, this is a kind of condition that it was almost like a group think that people are like, okay, I'm having these issues. I have breast implants. You're having these issues. You have breast implants. Is there some connection? And in that, I think it's a good thing. Like, you know, you have people connecting and talking about problems that they have with other people that may have the same problem. And that I think it's a great idea. Yeah. But once again, I'm always, what does the science show? Because just because you and same. I you know, maybe we both have breast implants and we're both tired. Does that mean that this is something medical or not? Right. I mean, absolutely no. Like you have to have like some link. And so um, I, I went through and I do this periodically where I will, I'll look through the literature about breast implant illness because I want to keep up with it because I am a breast expert. I mean, I did yeah. a fellowship in cosmetic and reconstructive breast surgery. You know, a lot of my practice is doing breast surgery. So I feel like I need to know these things. And so I do absolutely keep up with it. And so the first thing I pulled up is a study um, from, uh, fill that study up there. Yeah, this is actually from 2021. And so Rod Warwick actually is a famous plastic surgeon here in Dallas. He was head of UT Southwestern Plastics. He's, you know, uh, written a lot of books. He, he actually started his own podcast after ours, I will mention, but he does, he did start a podcast. That's nice. To ours. But he did a big study in 21 and they looked at all of like the, the studies and they said that there at that time had not been any concrete or evidence-based studies to support the formation of a medical diagnosis of breast implant illness, because that, that is something that all of these, you know, groups and, you know, information places will say that this is actually not a true medical diagnosis. Like it's something that everyone's talking about, but it hasn't gotten enough, <clears throat> like, Roof. Yeah, because I feel like with studies that they keep doing, they should be able to like follow the person before they have. So like you so had you're fatigue. You're so smart. Like you're gonna put me out of business here because you like you know exactly what I'm about to say. I went to college. Sarah, smart. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right because you know if there's a problem out there, you want to do studies to try and nail it down. Yeah. And as of yet, that that hasn't been done. Yeah, they're just focusing on the 
on yeah. researching a patient after they've already had a surgery right. and they a, need to focus on before yeah, and after. See, you're saying very smart things. They're, they're doing retrospective studies. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of retrospective studies. We're going to talk about some of the bigger ones. There's a lot out there and a lot of them are junk both, you know, for or against this, but there are some good ones. And, and you know, you in this, and I just want to say, you know, I am one of those people that I'm in the middle. I'm not one of those surgeons that's out there saying I'm a breast implant illness expert because I think a lot of those people are just charlatans. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not afraid to like piss off other surgeons, but and we'll we'll talk about why I think that. But I'm not one of those people too that says that this is a joke. Like it's not a joke, and there's studies that show it's well, not yeah, a joke. Well, yeah, people's mental health is not a joke because yeah. I feel like that's a lot to I mean, do with it. I mean, maybe maybe not. We don't know for sure, but I mean, the, the, and I, let me just talk about the studies and I'll I'll show you yeah. what I mean. So first I want to talk about the incidence. So how prevalent is this, right? Like how many people are out there saying, and that's really hard. There's not any good study that shows how many women are actually complaining of breast implant illness. I will tell you in the 13 years that I've been doing um, breast implants, and I've done a lot, like I, I have to be over a thousand breast implants that I've done, you know, patients, I would think, I don't know. I mean, I probably should go back and figure that out, but I've done a slew because I focus on breast and body. I do <clears throat> implants literally all the time. Yeah. I've had one patient come back to me recently and say, you know, I'm having these symptoms. Do you think it could be related to my implants? And so, and I'll talk about what I discuss with people. I've had plenty of other patients come from other doctors, you know, because I'm a breast specialist. And I, I just did a patient that came in with breast implant illness. I took out her implants, did a lift, and I actually brought pictures of her because she was kind enough to let me, you know, sh educate other patients of what it would be like to take out your implants. Sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in my practice, I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen people coming back and saying, I feel like I'm having these symptoms. I tried to figure it out based on the research, like what the incidence was. And I came up with it. It's around 1%. And that's not super scientific. That's me looking at the number of patients that say that they have this and then dividing that by the number of patients who are getting implants. So I, I estimate it's like less than 1%. I'm thinking like maybe 0.2 to 0.5%. So like one out of, you know, 200 to 500 people that get breast implants will say this. Yeah. Um, so it's not super common. The onset can be sooner or late based on the people that report it. So it could be, you know, a month after they get their implants. It could be five years after they get their implants. There's no set time. And the frustrating thing is there's no testing or diagnosis that can be done. This is what we call a diagnosis of exclusion. If you have these symptoms and we can't pinpoint a reason for them and you have breast implants, we might say, well, are your breast implants causing this? And as I said, there's, there's no real data to show that there's a clear link and people are trying to find that. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like people aren't looking for it. They are trying to find a link for breast implants to these, you know, what I call constitutional symptoms or like general, it's not like a symptom right at your breast. It's like you know, headache, I feel tired, I have memory problems, right? Yeah, I feel like it's an easy thing to believe is true, though. Like, you're putting something foreign in your body, so there, I mean, like... absolutely. Sure, like, yeah, there could be. There could be, right? Yeah. If it is something foreign in your body, there were plenty of people who had issues with breast implants in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Now, they were different issues. They were local issues, liquid silicone leaking in their body and causing all kinds of, like, you know... And they were measurable, though. What? They were measurable, though. Like there was actually they were proof. Measurable. Yeah, yeah, They're, yeah, yeah. True, true, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do want to talk about some studies, and the first study I want to talk about is from uh, 2020, and it's this in the uh, Annals of Plastic Surgery, and it's basically understanding breast implant illness before and after in an explanation. And so this study looked at 700 patients that thought they had breast implant illness. They they said, you know, they came to the doctor. They said, I have breast implant illness. I have these symptoms, and they got their implants removed. They also were going to a place that advertised themselves as a breast implant illness, you know, expert. Okay. So okay. this is like doctors seeking these patients who are seeking the doctors to do. Beating on the yeah. trend, I guess. Right. And surprising, or not surprisingly, um, their symptoms were the usual things. Numbness in the hands, joint pain, muscle pain, fatigue. I mean, there was kind of a laundry list of different things that they measured. And they did a very accurate measurement. It was a scale of like. I think it was one to five or one to 10 and they did it before their surgery and they did it right after their surgery and they did it like three and six months later and there was an enormous drop in their symptoms. I mean, like it was, it, it was no question that these patients reported that their symptoms absolutely got better. I mean, by, by almost a hundred percent, I mean, almost a hundred percent of the patients said 
that their symptoms were better. So when you see a study like that, like you're like, wow, I mean, obviously this isn't like a made up thing. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, these patients are getting better. I mean, true, they're self-reported symptoms, but they are getting better. And so, you know, you have to look at the study and at least, you know, not dismiss these people who are having these symptoms. Yeah. Now, with every study, I'm always like, okay, is there a weakness to the study, right? I mean, I'm, I, I, I've said this a million times, like I hate when studies pop up in the media and someone reads the study and they just take it as the gospel. Like, oh, it's a medical study. It has to be 100% accurate. And there were some weakness to this. And, and, and the weakness is one of them is what you said. It, it, was, uh, it was retrospective, I believe. It wasn't, like a, it wasn't like a blinded random study where like the patients didn't know they were being studied. Right. There is bias oftentimes when patients know what they're looking for and what the doctor's knowing and looking for. And these are patients who thought they had a problem. They believed if they took the implants out, they would get better. And what happened? They did, right? right. So it's like, okay, does that mean there's a medical link? And they, they found no medical link, but without question, the patients were getting better. So really like what the best study would be was one where there were patients who had the symptoms, but they didn't believe their implants were causing it. And what happened to them if they took out their implants, right? right. There is a study like that. Okay. Pop it up, next study. So this was a big one. This is out of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. And it's got this huge long title, but it, it basically looked at three groups of patients. One was women who had breast implants, thought they had breast implant illness, and they wanted them removed. Okay. okay? So that's just like every patient that was in the previous study. Right. There was a second group of patients that had breast implants, but they didn't think they had breast implant illness. They maybe didn't even know what breast implant illness was, but they also had symptoms similar to these other patients. And the last was what they call a control group, which had no breast implants whatsoever, and they were having just a breast lift. It was kind of random, like, why they threw that group in there. But, I mean, I get it. It's like a what we call a control, where, like, they don't have any implants just to see if their results are any different. And there was actually a lot of take-home things that this study showed. And uh, the first, you know, kind of take-home from the study was in the group of people who thought their symptoms were coming from the breast implants, 96% of them felt noticeably better after they got their implants removed. Right. So that, that goes back to the, the study that we just talked about. It, it proves that if a patient believes they have it, believes they have it, and you take out their implants, they're going to get better. Right. But some of the things that were, you know, also interesting, one, and I'm going to, I'll, I'll expand on this in a minute. It, it showed that when you take out that implant, it doesn't matter how you remove the capsule around it. Because there are like these people out there, these breast implant illness experts, and I, I just, <laughs> I roll my eyes when I say that. Some of them will say, oh, well, you have to see me because if you don't get every speck of the capsule, you're not going to get better. Right. Or you have to see me because I do an in-block resection of the capsule, and that's the way to get this, you know. And I even saw one that's like, you know, oh, well, I do these PCR, you know, it's all BS. Mm -hmm. Like, this study showed that it does not matter. Like, those people are just doing that for marketing. Right. You know, whether they took the capsule out, left it in, took it out this way, took it out that way, made no difference. All the patients in the group that thought they had the symptoms, when they took out the implants, they got better. And that was right. a pretty important take home. There were some other important things, and I'm gonna get to the, the big one, but the one uh, also I thought was important is it kind of like gave some characteristics of people that like, get breast implant illness, which I, I say this like not in any way to like, you know, tribalize them as like a group of people that do any certain thing, but you do wanna think if you're putting in breast implants, like which patients do you need to educate about this might be a thing, right? And so they found that the people who were most likely to get breast implant illness had uh, more commonly had lots of allergies, okay? So they had lots of reported allergies to other things. They had lots of self-reported diseases like uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, they had uh, fibromyalgia, uh, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, like, and they had these before too. It wasn't like Mm -hmm. They thought the implants gave them. These were things they had before they got their implants. Also, they tended to get their information off social media, which that makes perfect sense, right? Because these, this thing was born on social media. So, yeah. so it does give you some insight as a surgeon, like when I'm doing a consult, okay, who do I need to like really kind of sit down and say, hey, this is something you need to think about. You know, do you want to go ahead and get implants or yeah. not? And I, and I, do I feel do like people who are just like naturally overthinkers might have this issue too. Like they trick their body, their mind, and 
body to think that there is I mean, something I don't know. wrong. I mean, there, there's no data to kind of yeah, say exactly, exactly. what it is. But the most <laughs> important take home that I got from this study, which, which does like kind of solidify the fact that this shouldn't be like a dedicated medical diagnosis, is in the group of patients who had breast implants, who had symptoms of headache, fatigue, joint pain, and whatever, and didn't believe it was from their implants, what do you think happened when they took out their implants? They still had it. Still had it. It didn't change. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking is like your body and your mind yeah. are a crazy powerful. thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't there like, like women can make them, their body think that they're pregnant? Yeah. I, I, I've heard of that. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. I mean, so like, I'll look like up along your body can poison. do a lot of, st yeah. like your mind, like yeah. it's crazy. So, I mean, to me, that study was pretty like um, big in that I don't feel like they're going to find this like smoking gun link between yeah. implants and these things. Well,